Hi, welcome back to my channel. So you're watching part seven of a series of SPSS tutorials for beginners. And in this video, I will teach you how you can make an ROC curve, so a receiver operating curve, and how you can calculate the area under the curve. And this is something that we do when we want to look at the validation of prediction models. So let's get started. So I've made previous videos where I explain how you can validate a prediction model in general. And now I want to dig a little bit deeper and show you how you can actually do this in your own data in SPSS. So let's take a look at an example that I've used for one of my previous studies. So here you can see an example of a prediction model. It's called Adjuvant Online and it was uh, used in the past to determine which patients with breast cancer had a high or a low risk of dying from breast cancer and which patients might benefit from adjuvant chemotherapy or endocrine therapy. It's currently no longer available, but since I've used these data in the past to validate this in an external cohort, I think it's still a nice example to show you. And as you can see, uh, patients uh, are entered here with the different clinical characteristics and the model then uh, provides the chance of uh, dying of breast cancer after 10 years. So what we did in this study was we had a cohort of about 2000 patients and we manually entered all patients in this model. And then we entered the predictions that were derived from this model uh, in our own SPSS data set. So that is how we gathered the data. And it's also important to realize that this is therefore an external validation of an existing model. So I'm not looking into internal validation, which means that if you want to develop your own prediction model and your own data set, you are also looking at its validation or its validity uh, in the same data. And that's called internal validation. That is something I will be discussing in a different video because there you need to be a little bit more careful. But here we are really looking at external validation. So very shortly, refreshing your memory, what is a receiver operating curve and what are we looking at here? Well, here you can see an example of a receiver operating curve and we can see that sensitivity of the model is uh, on the y-axis and uh, one minus the specificity is here on the x-axis. So the way that you want to interpret this is that if we would have the perfect model, it would be completely at the top left corner because then we would have the highest sensitivity and also the highest specificity. And if you want to refresh your memory what sensitivity and specificity is, I also did a previous video on this topic. And I would recommend to watch that if you uh, have forgotten what these uh, topics mean, because it's quite important to understand the concept of a receiver operating curve. If we would have the worst possible model that we could think of, which is uh, just flipping a coin, because then the chance of having it right is always 50%. It doesn't get worse than that. We would actually have uh, the line that is here represented by a dotted line in the middle. So then we want to do some statistics, obviously, because you want to report something in your paper about your ROC curve. And the way to do this is to calculate the area under the curve. And of course, SPSS does this for you. And you can here see the areas under the curve in the right uh, bottom corner of this uh, example. It's also called C statistic. This is actually the same. So AUC or C statistic is often used uh, as a synonym of each other. So if we would interpret the areas under the curve that uh, would be derived from a model, the best possible model would have an area under the curve of uh, 1.0 and the worst possible model uh, of 0.5 or even lower. So here you can see that these models had an area under the curve of 0.7 or 0.75, which is generally considered as quite a good discrimination of predictive models. Because in clinical practice, the uh, perfect model does not really exist. So this is a model that is actually quite good when we look at clinical research. So now let me show you my SPSS data and show you how you can make your own ROC curve in SPSS. So here we can see a lot, a large amount of numbers. So each line here represents a patient. And here you can see uh, two ways that we use this model. I will not go into detail uh, about that, but uh, the predicted outcomes are depicted here on the left uh, and here on the second line for the second model. So in order to make an RC curve, you must have the predicted probabilities of the outcome uh, in your data set on an individual, individual level. 
And for different uh, prediction models, this may look differently. So there are also prediction models that are quite easy to use and are simply a score of certain uh, variables. And in that case, you can uh, easily write your own syntax and make a variable um, that represents the individual risk of a certain outcome based on that prediction model. So there are several ways uh, to obtain this individual information for each patient, but this is your first step to perform an external validation. And in my case, this was obviously a lot of work because we manually entered all these patients in the model. So secondly, it's important to realize that ROC curves can only be used for binary outcomes. So we are looking at predictive models that have a, a yes or a no outcome. So for example, the risk of complication of a certain treatment. A patient either had the complication or did not. And in my example, there is an important remark here. Because the outcome of this prediction model was 10 year overall survival or overall mortality. And in order to use the ROC function in SPSS, it is essential that for my data, I had 100% follow-up. So this means that I really knew which patients were dead or alive after 10 years. And this is of course not always the case, because in many instances, uh, you will not have complete follow-up for your whole cohort. And in that case, you can still make an ROC curve, but it's not possible to do this in SPSS, and you will need more complicated statistical software, for example, R. But this is a bit too much detail for this presentation. It's just something to keep in mind. So think about what is the outcome that you have for your prediction model. Is it a binary outcome? And do you really know it for all the patients that you want to test? If the answer to one of these questions is no, then you cannot use the ROC function in SPSS. So now we will uh, actually perform the analysis. So we will go to the Analyze tab, press ROC curve over here. And you will see this screen over here. And I've already placed the test variables. So that is the two ways that we entered the predicted probabilities in SPSS here. Uh, I've already entered them as a test variable here. And uh, in my cohort, the uh, status of the patient, so that means the uh, uh, is the patient alive or dead, uh, is entered here. And I also need to tell SPSS uh, when did the patient fail. So when did the patient have an event? And in this instance, that means having a one. Then over here, we want to display the ROC curve. So we need to tick that box. And I always like to see the diagonal reference line that I showed you in the previous example. For reporting the outcome, uh, you also want to have a standard error and a confidence interval over here. The options tab actually does not show you and does not give many uh, options that you use more often, so you can leave them as it is. Then I've also previously mentioned that you can simply press OK and it will give you the output that you want, but I always recommend to press Paste because then you will uh, have a, a syntax uh, a viewer over here and you can actually save what you did. So let's uh, give it a heading, RC curve to models. Uh, adjuvant online. Now we will play the syntax and the output is derived over here. So you can see that it shows you both models, so model 1 and model 2. Here is the reference line in the middle and down here you can see the areas under the curve. So for the model 1 the area under the curve is 0.7 and this is statistically significant, uh, significantly different from the green line in the middle. This is the way you can also report that with the confidence interval over here. And this is the second area under the curve with again the confidence interval. So now you could uh, use this picture for your publication and you can also report these outcomes uh, in your paper. So it's, really, it's quite easy to actually perform this analysis. So there you go. I've shown you how you can make your own ROC curve in SPSS. So again, remember that you can only do this for data where you have a complete data of the outcome that you want to study. So if you want to look at survival data and you don't have complete follow-up, remember to use another statistical package because SPSS does not cover that. So thank you so much for watching. I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel or if you would give me any feedback to this video. And I look forward to see you next time.